Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Jess from Upside Down Pencil. Um, just making a quick vlog here. I haven't vlogged in a very long time. Um, my website's going under a big, huge uh, construction right now, but I want to take the time and talk some ruins. I mean, uh, it's been a busy uh, off season, for lack of a better terms. Um, I wouldn't say that's bad or a good thing for the Boston Bruins. Um, they've been somewhat active. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much of what they did in terms of free agency or anything like that because um, it was less than exciting for us Bruins fans. Uh, obviously the Boston Bruins missed out on Tavares, although that wasn't really under their control. Um, you can argue um, they got a couple of players in Nordstrom and Wagner, fill some bottom six roles on the team. You know, you have Shallow moving on and uh, Nash moving on to Columbus. So I, I, think, I think those moves were kind of obvious of them happening. Um, another obvious move that people think it's gonna happen. I I think it's gonna happen at some point is the movement of Tori Krug. A very, very good offensive player in the back end, can help your power play, can move the puck up the ice, can really engage your forwards um, in offensive play. Um, there are some defensive shortcomings with them, but it's not about really moving out Krug. It's more about looking at the cap, um, having some um, cap management and uh, roster management, you know, for the next couple of years. I mean, he's up in the next couple of years, right? So um, I think he's making 5.25 million right now. And I'm pretty sure his team and his agents are already looking at the at the league right now at the market. And um, they see Krug as a 7.5 to $8 million player right now. Um, I don't think that's something uh, the Bruins are ready to do. Um, so I think you cash in, especially coming off a tremendous career season for him. Um, I think his value is not higher. Um, I'm pretty sure teams want to see how he looks like after his injury. Um, but I really want to talk about what's just the Bruins roster. Obviously, he's, uh, as constituted, not about you know any pending deals that are going to go down. Who knows if they go down, if at all. Um, but right now, my lineup is Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, Bjork on the first line. I know a lot of people are not going to like that just because I'm splitting up the best line in the league last year. And, you know, I, I totally understand the fans who don't want to do that, but I really believe in balance. Um, and I think Pasternak and Krejci can work together and they have in the past. And I know for some people it's not that obvious, but I really believe that's because um, a lot of the fans are blinded by the fact that, you know, you're playing with, with two of the top players in the National Hockey League, you know, especially in, in Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. You have a Selkie Award winner, multi Selkie Award winner as your uh, as your centerman, and you have an elite left winger who, you know, just has all. He's a five tool player. If you want me to make a baseball reference, and that's Marshawn, and you have the best three way player in the league in Patrice Bergeron. I think you're gonna put up some pretty good numbers um, with those two at the helm. Um, but I really believe now that Jake DeBrus really found his stride, really found his game in the second half later half of the year, um, especially after being sat down by Cassidy, who's a tremendous coach with the young players. He knows when to press the, the buttons. Um, he really found his strides, uh, you know, and he just became a force in, in, in the playoffs. I think um, he he really was their best player beyond Pasternak in, in the whole playoffs. And he was actually my dark horse um, in terms of unsung hero. So, Pat myself on the back a little bit there that I, I put down uh, Jake DeBrusca for that title. And, and sure enough, I mean, he he met my expectations and more. Um, he's a tough kid. He likes to yap a little bit. He has a little bit of Marshawn uh, in him, I feel. Um, he's a big body. He has tons of speed, straightaway speed. Um, he knows how to protect the puck. And that's so ideal in the National Hockey League. Um, he has he has a lot of tools, and I, I think he has he's a he's a 30, 30 goal scorer in this league, and uh, right now I know there's a lot of speculation about um, him being in some trade rumors, and if I'm the Bruins, I tie that kid up and don't let him go. Um, but yeah, Pasternak would work tremendously with that line, and a lot of people are kind of just dismissing Bjork. Um, I've seen this kid play for the last four or five years, when especially when he was in Notre Dame. I mean this. This kid is so dynamic. His speed is blurring, um, blistering shot, um, great vision. He's, he's he's more like a playmaking wing, but his shot is tremendous, and I think he can 
really be a good sniper on in this league. And again, you play with Marshawn and Bergeron. I mean, uh, you're looking at 25 goals, and and I really feel that Ber that Bjork can provide you that offense and be a you know a 60 point 60 point player. Um, I truly believe he's a game breaker, and I really believe that Bjork can, has a 70 point plus stick in his hands. That's how elite I think he is, and I know a lot of uh, a couple of injuries derailed his system, his his season last year. Um, so a lot of fans didn't really get to see him at his best and get his feet wet in the National Hockey League. I believe he only played like 30 games last year. Um, but man, if you can only see this kid play uh, on a consistent basis, uh, he'll open some eyes for sure. And on the third line, um, it's, that's when it gets really, really interesting, right? Um, you have a lot of young kids that are coming up, knocking on the door. A lot of young kids already from last year that, you know, again, depending on any, any possible trades, I think you're looking at uh, Ryan Donato playing the left wing on the third line. And my dark horse to make the third center spot is Jack Stadnicka, um, who's a tremendous player, very heady, speedy. Um, he used to work on his shot just a little bit more. It's not, it's not that heavy. Um, I don't believe it's an NHL shot, but I think he gets in the right spots um, to, to, um, to have enough time for that release. So that's a little bit of some uh, physical work that he has to do there and get a little bit stronger as well. But I think everything else he has, I think again, like Marshawn, I think he has a, kind of that it factor, that five tool ability. Um, and over time he'll develop that shot and he'll just be a very dangerous player. Um, but logic says that, you know, Jacob first back of Carson will get that spot. And I am way more than all right with that. I think he's the best kind of two way prospect right now. He's the more mature prospect then. Um, JFK is known to be a clutch player for BU, and I think he's going to continue that in Boston. Um, on the right side, uh, I think you go with Denton Heinen. Denton Heinen, great, great kid. Um, really had a tremendous career in Denver, part of that Pacific Rim line. Um, um, very, very good player. He has an underrated shot. I think the kid needs to shoot more because his shot is lethal. Um, and I think he can score 20 goals on a consistent basis in this league as well. So I think he's your, he's your right wing. Um, then it gets a little bit more interesting in the, on the fourth line. Um, do you go with Nordstrom? Do you go to Wagner? Um, personally, I think Nordstrom has a little bit more to give, I feel. I think with a little bit more opportunity in Boston. Since Boston doesn't really consider their lines as one, two, three, four. It's more like, hey, who's giving us the most, the most right now, the most in this shift, the most in this game, in this period? And they go with that line. So I think Nordstrom is going to give a lot. And I think he'll be a little bit of a fan favorite, especially with the penalty killing. Um, in the middle, I think you go Sean Corrali. Of course, um, this kid is just a speedster. He's, he's big. Um, he has some clutch goals in the playoffs. Um, I just think he, I think there's a little bit more there with Sean Corrali. I think I keep comparing him to Mike Knubel. Um, who didn't flourish, I think, until he was 26, almost 27 years old. And um, I think Corrali can, can do that. Um, and good thing he resigned for the next couple of years. Um, on the right side, you have veter the veteran Bacchus. I know people are going to not be too happy about having $6 million riding around and uh, the fourth line, but it's the reality, right? I mean, you're kind of going back and really sticking to your development curve that you know Don Sweeney has instituted over the last couple of years. And that's if, no matter how old you are, if you're ready, you're ready. And uh, you're gonna get an opportunity to make this team. And I think uh, you can see Boston moving and trending that way since last season. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping for a tremendous season this year. Um, I think the Bruins are gonna um, take a, a next step. They may not win um, the amount of games they won last year. They may not get 112 points. But I think they'll be better, if that makes any sense. I think they'll be they'll be a better all-around team. They'll be a young, fast team led with a lot of good core veterans. So I'm looking I'm, I'm looking for a very exciting year this year. All right, guys, that's all for today. See ya.